it's time to tackle the financial sections of your business plan. Your launch and continued success will depend on how well you structure your financials. Let's begin with startup financing. Once you've understood your operations and marketing, you'll need to figure out what it's going to cost you to get your business up and running. Startup financials are an important element of your business plan. They will tell a potential investor or financial institution that you've put a lot of thought into how you will get to your launch. Every business requires some capital to get started. At the core, startup costs are anything that you need to secure before you open your doors or make your first sale. This is in contrast with the costs that you'll incur while running your business. For instance, utilities and rent are operational costs. Startup costs were a difficult thing for us. Being new business owners, we had no idea what to expect. That I'd have enough money to complete all my renovations so that the stylists and all the new clients would be happy were with their new space. My concern with startup costs was being able to afford the necessary equipment to be competitive. That I would have enough money um, for the huge amount of inventory that I had to have in the salon for stock and for resale. It was also important that the machinery lasts and didn't break down. And that I'd have enough money for working capital. And lastly, it was important that the machinery got up and running and we were able to make our money back on it. Uh, which is why I started renting chairs in the first place so that I could make that up a little bit quicker. And in that end, it took about six months to do that. I had a strong business model and Futurepreneurs saw that. They funded me and with that seed money, I was able to um, launch my business. And of course, the big thing, would we have enough? Would there be enough to cover all of those costs? I received my initial funding from Futurepreneur Canada and also applied for a Manitoba startup loan. Uh, this allowed me to cover my startup costs and hit the ground running. We knew though that Futurepreneur would be a great resource. They certainly helped us to see exactly where we could um, put our funding toward. Our initial funding came from Futurepreneur. Having the support of Futurepreneur allowed us to leverage more funding from sources like BDC and RBC. But that's what the business plan really helped us to do. It helped us to see how we were going to um, allocate all of those funds. So the financing that I received for my business was my own owner's equity. Secondly, I got a loan through Canada Canadian Youth Business Foundation, great repayment plan. And lastly, I was given uh, gifted money through my parents, which the bank actually called a love letter so that I didn't have to pay any interest back on it. And then, of course, ensuring that we had a rainy day fund for unforeseen costs. We needed to make sure we were fully prepared. And the best part about Futurepreneur is that we are always a part of the Young Entrepreneur family. Startup costs are costs you incur to start your business. These are fixed costs like equipment, like furniture for your restaurant. They could even be a storehouse of inventory that helps you get your business off the ground. Ongoing operational costs are operational costs related to the ongoing operations of your business. So for example, you're purchasing food to sell, or you might be paying for salaries for a staff or an employee. The best way to calculate your startup cost is to make a list. List off all those important expenses that you're going to incur to get your business off the ground. So these could be things like equipment, uh, furniture, office supplies, maybe a laptop computer. All of these expenses are going to be needed to get your business moving forward. Let's take a closer look at building your startup costs. For this, let's say our business is a new bakery. First, we've made a list of everything you need to start. Equipment, inventory for your first batch of baked goods, the first and last month's rent for your location, your business registration, your legal fees, and your licenses. Next, let's put in our numbers. Add these numbers to get the total of your expenses. Set 
Second, let's make a note of what capital you'll have available for those costs. Usually, this comes in the form of owner's contributions, money that you already have that you'll be using, and loans, money that you've borrowed from lenders. Now, let's put these numbers in. Add these numbers together to get your available capital. Next, let's take the total of the expenses and subtract it from the available capital. In this case, we're on the positive side. That's good. If your startup costs are more than the money you have raised, you'll either need to reduce your costs or find additional financing. If your startup costs are less than the money you have raised, then the remainder becomes working capital, which you can use for ongoing costs. Startup costs can be a difficult thing for entrepreneurs to ascertain. You need to make sure that you have enough financing to cover these starting costs and your operating costs for the first year. I implore entrepreneurs to be careful not to bootstrap their businesses because by the time they do need financing, they've maxed out their credit. So, uh, talk me a little bit about Bronitz. Um, well, Bronitz is, is a uh, kind of a donut and coffee shop that we started in the exchange. And uh, Bronitz stands for two brothers making donuts. What would you say uh, were the top three things that you were concerned about regarding startup costs? The construction, like the build out of the space, was um, I think most people underestimate the amount of cost that goes into it. Uh, things like making sure you have enough power in your electrical panel, or you know, the plumbing. A lot of appliances we didn't think that we would need initially. Um, a lot of upgrades that we didn't know that we would have to make once we had opened. Um, like our mixer, we had, uh, we had a mixer lined up, but we needed to quickly purchase a new one because uh, we just weren't able to meet the demand. For that reason, it's nice to open with money in your pocket. <laughs> so that if yeah, you find out, sure. oh, we have a line down the street, we need a new mixer, you've got some give there to upgrade things quickly. I've told most of my entrepreneurs, have at least three months of, it, of what your expenses are in the bank. Mm -hmm. oh, for sure. Just, mm -hmm. just yeah. to, for those emergencies. When you open a business, you have like a kind of a starting hub where it's like lots of people come check you out. You have to have your staff accordingly. But then once that kind of tapers off, you're still left with the staff kind of left with a couple of weeks of like, oh, payroll's higher than what it should be. At first we were looking for really, really good bakers, but then we realized that we needed, because we were a new business, the number one thing we needed was people who were going to be flexible and work hard. So you would say that it's really important to hire for personality and not for skills, because skills can always be taught. Yeah, you can teach somebody to make coffee, you can teach people to make donuts. Um, you can't teach a good worker. No, yeah, you can't. You can't teach people to be flexible and to say, hey, can you come in today? It's really busy. I was pregnant with her the whole time we were starting the business, so it was pretty wild. And we didn't know what would happen first, the business or the baby. Yeah. <laughs> Us having to leave a week after the shop opened. We quickly ran out of resources after that first week. I called um, up all our packaging, all the packaging, <laughs> things like that. So we would get an initial order and we didn't know what to do in extreme circumstances, so that was something that they were doing before, <laughs> and I had to just do. So where did you get the financing to start up this business? Half of our financing came from um, Futurepreneur, EDC, and RBC loans, um, and then the other half was a private investor. And how is your business doing today? It's been crazy. Yeah. Like we, when we opened and we had those huge lines and people just wanted more, it was wild. Like, there's no way we could have anticipated that. Well, I do have to say, coffee here, amazing. <laughs> Acquiring startup financing will usually involve securing a loan for an organization like Futurepreneur or a financial institution. There are many places that you can get a loan from. The amount that you can secure and the interest terms that you'll have to pay will depend upon your credit score. Your credit score is a history of your ability to pay off debts, such as a cell phone, credit cards, and a credit line as well as how much credit you currently utilize. 
Keeping your credit score healthy is a good indication to the bank that you are demonstrating good behavior in servicing your debt. Your credit score is basically a judgment about your financial health at a specific point in time. So this can change from day to day. You could pull your credit on a Monday, pull your credit on a Friday, and the score can actually change slightly. It's the risk that you represent to lenders compared to other consumers. So the bank looks at your credit score and tries to decide whether they should give money to you. So the higher your score, the lower your risk. So you'd be looking at a beacon of anything about 700 or more in order to get financing. The amounts owed, what you actually owe on your credit cards, your line of credits, your payment history. Do you pay things on time? Are you late? Do you pay in full? Do you pay just a portion? the length of your credit history, how long have you had those credit cards, the types of credit you have. There are cell phones, there's credit cards, lines of credit, RRSP loans, and any new credit that you've tried to acquire. So if you go out and get a Sears card or an Eaton's card at the same time, that's actually gonna drive your credit down. You should wait about 30 days when you're applying for new credit if you're going to be looking at obtaining a business loan for your business. There are two providers in Canada, TransUnion and Equifax. The easiest way is to go online, pay a small fee, around $23, and they will send you your credit score within about five minutes. Always make your payments on time. If you can't make your payments, contact your lenders. They will usually work something out with you. Never go over your credit limit. Always remember that there's going to be interest that's going to be charged and factor that in when you're making at least the minimum payment every month. If you apply for too much credit within a certain period of time, you will get flagged and your credit score actually drops. Don't overuse the amount of credit that you're utilizing. Try to keep credit at about 35%, especially if you're going to a, for a business loan. If your credit's maxed out, lenders will not give you that money because they're afraid that there could be a chance of claiming bankruptcy or not having the proper cash flow. Also, if you're applying for credit, don't do it all within a short period of time. That can actually decrease your credit score when you're shopping around for credit. At the end of the day, make sure that you can afford to pay back any money that you borrow for your business. One little tip is I tell business owners to set up an automatic withdrawal to pay off all of their operational costs on a monthly basis. That way, you don't forget to pay your bills. Hiring an accountant is extremely valuable to your business. They're gonna make sure that you collect all your receipts and get things organized into an accounting platform. They're also gonna make sure that you write off all the expenses and deductions that you have fairly coming your way. So in the end, they're gonna likely save you a lot of money. Doing this while your business is running can often be a lot, uh, a lot less expensive than if you attempt to do it later and play what we call catch up. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the difference between filing your personal, business, and corporate tax. Personal taxes are filed on an annual basis and are the accumulation of the T-slips and deductions from throughout the year. Your personal return is due on April 30th of every year. Business taxes are filed with your personal return, which accumulate all of your revenues expenses incurred by your business throughout the year. Net income from these businesses is added to your personal income. Net losses are deducted from your personal income. If you are filing a business return, your filing deadline is extended to June 15th for your personal return, but you must pay your balance of taxes by April 30th to avoid interest bearing charges by CRA on the outstanding balance. So corporate taxes are filed on behalf of a corporation and can have varying year ends based on your selection. A corporation is a separate legal entity and as such, money given to or taken away from the corporation needs to be tracked effectively. As an owner, you can choose to pay yourself as an employee and take a T4 or employment income, or you can choose to pay yourself a dividend and take a T5, 
which is investment income. You have six months after your selected year end to file your corporate return. Get yourself an accountant. Sit down with them and discuss your business. Get them to understand your business. Get them to learn about your business. They're going to be able to identify expenses that you may not have thought that you could write off before. I will say in the end, find an accountant that works with you and is able to go after those deductions that you want to deduct while respecting CRA. It's always a great idea to be very fair when dealing with CRA to prevent any issues from happening if you are reviewed or audited on your expenses. Make sure you take everything that you've learned in this video and put those numbers into our online cash flow template. This will help you determine your startup costs. Thank you to the province of Manitoba and Futurepreneur Canada for making this video series possible. Please check out the rest of our series online. Until next time, goodbye.